Hello everybody, in this lesson, we're gonna be taking a look at GitHub. And then what we're gonna be doing is seeing a little bit of a workflow of using both Git and GitHub together. If you remember from our last lesson, we connected Git to GitHub. So now we can work on a little bit of that workflow of how it would actually look using both of these tools at the same time. We also pushed all of our stuff from our local repo in Git into this GitHub repo right here. The first thing that we're gonna look at is we can actually take a look at our previous commits. So these are all the commits that we made on our local repo, but when we connected it and we pushed it up into GitHub, we still have all of those commits here that we can see. And so that's really great to see. We can also go in, and this is our first file.py, we can click on this file and we can actually look at the code that is in here, as well as, of course, our other files as well. The next thing we're gonna take a look at is a pull request. Now, we're gonna be looking at a pull request in just a little bit, we're gonna see how that works, but a pull request is something that is different between GitHub and Git. On Git, you can just commit and merge and do all those things basically whenever you want, but, Within GitHub, we do have to create a pull request, which is how you approve code and you get things merged back into the main branch. We will be taking a look at that in just a little bit. There also is issues and issues are really common, especially within larger teams. So if you're working on code, you can create a new issue and you can assign it to somebody. You can label it, you can assign it to a project or whatever milestone you might be working on and you can create it. And so, you know, if you're going back in the code and you see, oh, there's something wrong with this first file in our output on our website or for this customer, they're getting something weird. So we create an issue, we assign it to someone and then it will show up right in here. So let's go ahead and create a new issue really quick. I'm just gonna assign it to myself and I'm gonna say uh, first file not working correctly. This is a terrible uh, <laughs> title, but then in here, uh, this is the details you need to know. So then I would write up, you know, here's what's going on. Maybe I need to attach a file or something, uh, but here you need to know. And I'm going to create this. And so now if I come back to issues, we can see that this is assigned and I can make sure I can see the ones that are assigned to me. And I'll come in here. And then I'll say, I fix this. And I can just say, close with a comment. So now it's gonna be closed out. I fixed this issue and now it is closed. And so that's how you assign and you can get things assigned to you from your team. If I hop over here to projects, projects is a little bit, there. there's a lot of things that you can do in projects. Uh, let's get rid of this. But a lot of teams will use this almost like a Jira board or a can Kanban or Kanban board, however you say it. Um, but you can create these different projects and you can assign different things to people. Let's just create a board here. And it's just a blank one, but this is like a board that you use it with any other project it has to do and progress done. And this is where a project manager or somebody on your team might come in and organize this. They might have things set up that you need to accomplish, that your team needs to accomplish. So this can be really useful. If I'm being honest though, my team almost never use this. We always use something like Jira or something that Microsoft had because we were Microsoft shop. And so I didn't use it that much if I'm being honest, but you can use it. Uh, let's go back into our Git series. The last thing I wanna show you is we can create other branches in here. So right now we only have the main branch, that's all we pushed, but we can create multiple different branches in here. And when we create these separate branches, we can then make changes on these branches and merge it back into our main branch. So let's come up here, let's click on this branch and we have our main branch and let's go ahead and let's just create a new branch. Let's get, let's get wild. We're gonna say new, GitHub branch, and we're gonna create this new branch. So now if we go back, we're gonna to go to our code. If we go back to main, we now have our main, that's our default branch. We have this new GitHub branch. Let's go ahead and click on this. This is basically a copy of our main branch. And so it has all the same commits. It has all the same files and information in here, but let's go ahead and let's add a file. We're just gonna create a new file and we're gonna come in here, we're gonna name this file. So I'm gonna call this a github file.py. And we're gonna say this is a file just for GitHub. And we're gonna commit these changes and go ahead and commit them. 
And now we're getting this message that says this branch is one commit ahead of main because we just went into this new branch and we added a new file and we committed it. Now, if we go back to the main branch, you're going to notice we no longer have that new file that we created. It's just in that separate branch. But now we're going to get this message up here. It says new GitHub branch had recent pushes 15 seconds ago. It's going to want us to compare and create a pull request. Let's go ahead and click on this. So if we do this, we're going over basically to opening a pull request. What this does is it creates a new pull request by comparing changes across two branches. And if you need to, you can compare them across forks as well. So we can create this pull request. So let's go ahead and create pull request. And it's going to see if there is a conflict with the branch. Now, conflicts within a branch means that a file was changed in both the main branch and it was changed in a different branch. And if you tried to merge them, you're going to get a conflict because you changed both of them. Of course, we didn't do that. So now we can merge this pull request. So let's go ahead and merge this back into the main branch. I'm going to confirm this merge. And now you can see that this was appropriately merged. Let's go back to our code. And now in our main branch, you're going to see that that GitHub file was added. And so now both of these branches are up to date. The only thing that is not up to date is if we come back here. Because if we come back to our local repository, this is not updated. And so let's see how we can pull that new file that we created in GitHub. And we're going to pull that down to our local repository. And just by clicking refresh, it says that we've synchronized those changes. But let's come back to our source control. You can see right over here, we committed these files. But then you see this little orange line right here. It says that we created a GitHub file. Then we merged that pull request within GitHub. And now main and origin main, which is GitHub, are both on the most recent commit. Now, what you may also want to do is you may also want to come in here and say git pull origin main. And that is also how you can pull that down just using git natively. Of course, we are already up to date, so we don't need to do that. But let's go add one more file and let's just test that out. So we're going to come in here. We're going to add another file. And we're going to call this uh, GitHub file 2 and just say this is the second file. And we're going to go ahead and commit these changes. And this should be on our main branch. So we should be perfectly fine. So there we go. Now we're going to write the same thing. So this is on our local repo. We're going to say git pull origin main. And then it's going to say, OK, let's bring down everything that we don't already have. Any changes, any new files. If it's new and it doesn't sync up to our last commit, let's take a look at that. So we have this one file changed. And that's our GitHub file 2. Let's go ahead and say ls to take a look. And now you can see that we have that GitHub file 2 right here. We didn't call it .py. Uh, we probably should have. In fact, we could come in here and change that if we want to, but we don't need to. But let's go back now. We have git, uh, let's open up VS Code and git. Um, if that file is showing right here, we should also see it right here. So we open that GitHub file too, and this is the second file. And so that's how we can pull down files or changes from GitHub. And typically that happens when someone on your team uploads a new file or a client uploads a new file and you want that file locally so you can actually do your work. And so you'll pull that down so then it's in your local file folder and you can actually use that file. And the same thing would apply. Let's say in here we need a new file. We're going to create a new file. Let's say it's a Python file. We're going to say this is the latest file with our code. And we're going to go ahead and save this. And let's call this git file one. And let's save that. So now we have a file that is untracked. It hasn't been put into any repository, local or remote. But we can come over here and we can first add this. So we're adding it to our staging area. And now we can commit this. I didn't add a message. Let me actually get rid of this. Let's add a message. We're going to say git local repo. Ooh, whoops. Let's do git local repo change. And we're going to create that commit. But now these are out of sync, right? So now we have our GitHub repo that's back here. So we have it a file behind. 
And then we have our local repo. And we just did a bunch of work. We worked really hard on this Git file one. And we want to push that so that it's in the GitHub. It's shareable. We can access it. And so can the people on our team. So we're just going to click Sync Changes. And it's going to sync up to where that file is now in GitHub. And they are both on the same place. So now let's go back. And if we click Refresh right here, we should see that Git file one as well. And so that's a really common workflow. Of course, like we said in the last lesson, you may want to create a branch off of that and do your work and then merge it back into the main branch so you aren't messing with the current files and you don't mess anything up. Of course, you can always revert back or check out a previous commit. And that is really the power of Git in a nutshell. And then you can share it to your GitHub so that people on your team or you can have access to it anywhere or have access to it later. So I hope that that was helpful. I hope that you learned something in this series. If you want to dive even further into Git and GitHub, I have a full course on my platform, analystbuilder.com. I will leave a link in the description if you want to check it out. If you have not already, be sure to like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next video.